Hey, it's Clay at ClayCharter.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, July 19th. Hopefully everybody had a good week here. And this will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're somebody that uses technical charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about the tool of technical analysis and charts and how it can be used to make good, informed, wise decisions as a trader, then this will be a video for you. And real quick on that note, if you are interested in learning more, so as I go through the video and if you're starting to see the value of using technical analysis as a tool, then I wanna personally invite you to a live class that I'm offering this upcoming Thursday on July 22nd. So if you're interested in getting signed up, if you're watching on YouTube, just in the description box, you can click on a link there. Or if you're at claytrader.com, then there's several different areas around the video that you can click on to get signed up. But just keep that in the back of your mind. If you're liking what you're seeing, if you're seeing some value and wanna learn more and just get better with it to build consistency then like I said, get signed up for the class. First stock here, ticker symbol AMC, and a lot of people talking about it, especially over the past couple of days, and did this analysis on Thursday. And the very big question mark going forward is, all right, does this action right here really mean anything? What do I mean by that? Well, drew this trend line here, and that trend line was measuring the fact that, hey, a very nice bounce started on Thursday. So going into Friday, a question of can this bounce continue? And as of now, like I said, the price, Broke below the trend line, but the price is actually now basically right at that trend line. So the question becomes, all right, is a trend line bounce coming? Meaning is this gonna, you know, get the bounce going right back upwards within the, the general trend of things? Or maybe is this the start of something much, uh, you know, worse where the price breaks to the downside? Nobody knows charts are not a crystal ball, but the, you know, that's definitely the, the pressing dynamic is you had this nice uptrending line there and now the price is literally sitting basically right at that level. So the big question mark, not necessarily just on Monday, but certainly early next week is what's gonna do, you know, what's happening with this trend line? Is the trend line ultimately gonna produce a bounce back upwards or is the price gonna continue to bleed back downwards? If it does bleed to the downside, then the next overall area remains down there at that secondary green line there at 32. If the price does continue on up, then definitely the level of resistance that has really revealed itself now is that purple line there, the 50 period moving average. But I mean, what a stubborn level. Failed, 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 failed. So, I mean, several times, so much history with the price up around that purple line. And it's not really a question of can the price break above it because the price has broken above it several times. It's more a question of can the price actually stay above it? And that's where it's ultimately failed. So, First dynamic, what exactly is gonna go on with this trend line here? If the price does produce, uh, produce a bounce, then watch that purple line. If the price continues to break down, then all eyes will be on that $32 mark. Next one here, ticker symbol GLG. And overall, this is really just a play on, you know, do, do you think that there's this thing's got another breath in it? Do you think that this thing's got another go? Or was this just kind of a one day wonder and now it's just gonna be you know, drifting back into oblivion? Because yeah, the, the good news here is that this one showed that it can move and it can move pretty quickly. That opening 30 minutes there, big surge up. Uh, and then from there, they'll kind of just pulled back. Both in the grand scheme of things, like I said, maybe just maybe this is a healthy pullback and things are gonna, you know, getting ready to get turned back around. But that is why in my mind that the level that, in my opinion at least, whoops, let's try the other. There we go. The level that really matters to me is down there at that 90 cent mark. And why is 90 cents so important to me? And I'm not saying this will occur, but just for explanation's sake, if the price goes to 90 and then just continues on down, what would that be doing to the price? That would literally be putting the price right back inside of this big old range where it just was. Or said another way, that would imply that the price exploded upwards, to then go right back to where it was. Not exactly a sign of true power. So again, to me, 90 cents is that make or break level in terms of, all right, is this a healthy consolidation or is this the price literally basically just a pump and dump, right? Where the price exploded and then right back to where it was. So 90 cents, very important level. If the price does try to turn around, then that first key level of resistance is going to be right there at this area, which sits around the dollar 20 mark. And then after a dollar 20, Next key area up there right around the dollar thirty-five mark. So let's see what happens with it. But yeah, this very well may just be the beginning of the end. But who knows? Maybe this is just a, a little temporary pullback before a much bigger move happens next week. We'll see. Next one here, ticker symbol XELA, and a very disappointing day on this one. It started off very impressively, got the gap up right there. Price made a nice move, got all the way there, and then it was like somebody flipped the switch, the party stopped, and then the rest of the day just drifted back downwards which brings about what I would consider a very, very important level of support now, right here at $3.15, which if you go back through the history of the chart, you can see did a good job of holding strong there and then back there on Thursday. And it's one of those areas where if the price breaks below it, 
am I going to say that the entire chart is now epically destroyed? I don't know. That, that's a little too dramatic for me. But would that be just a very big disappointment after the price all of a sudden acted like it wanted to be strong? And then all of a sudden, not only would it have been going, you know, gone back to where it was, but continued on even lower. Yeah, that just wouldn't be a very good sign of things. So 315 is going to be that first very important level. If the price breaks below 315, I mean, no guarantees. But at that point, I don't think anybody would be shocked to see the price then drift down to at least the 200 period moving average, that pink line there currently valued at uh, 275. So 315 and then 275 gonna be those main areas of support. If the price does try to turn around, then like AMC, that purple line there, the 50 period moving average has now proven to be a very stubborn level. You can see it rejected the price there. And then today, again, like AMC, not really a problem of breaking above the level because the price was able to break above it. But when it comes to staying up above it, that's where the, the, the big problem arose. So if there is any sort of attempt to turn around, then that 50 period moving average currently valid at 393 will be that main battleground. Next one here, ticker symbol XX, SXTC and fantastic pattern, uh, very well defined. And when things are very well defined, you know, so in other words, I'm not trying to come across like I have a special skill or this is some sort of great discovery on my part. The exact opposite. I assure you people that use charts, understand charts, have noticed this pattern. And the main part of this pattern is this well-defined breakout area right up there at $2.28. You can see once, twice, three times the price tried to get up through that area and just couldn't quite do it. So for whatever reason, kind of a random area, $2.28. They're, they're just very clearly are sellers up there. But like I said, you know people around the world have taken notice of that level. And while that doesn't guarantee anything, it does make it more than valid and rational to think, well, you know, if the price can get up there and get the break up through it, that break in and of itself could very well create quite a bit of upwards buying pressure, uh, even if it's just people buying because, hey, it's a breakout, I'm gonna buy. So that is definitely gonna be the main breakout area moving forward. And then from the support side of things, I have a nice upwards little trend right there. So I'll change that to green to represent uh, a bullish attribute and then put the pull and play right there. And then as always for you golfers out there to make this a little bit more visual, there's the golf hole. So this would be known as a bull pennant pattern. So yeah, best way to summarize this is just a 30 minute time frame here, bull pennant pattern. Let's see if the price can get a breakout or not next week. Next one here, ticker symbol NIO and Let's get this pattern just in place first here before I go too far into things. So there's the top part of the pattern. And then let me get that in play too. And let me change just to green again. And this is what would be known as a falling wedge pattern. And I understand falling wedge may sound like a bearish pattern, but it's actually a bullish pattern, whereas a rising wedge would be a bearish pattern. But anyways, falling wedge pattern here has formed. And just because something bullish does not mean that, oh, it's for sure gonna go back up. But definitely an interesting area and interesting dynamic here going on. But really the, the main level that a whole lot of people and rightfully so will be watching next week is gonna be that $42 mark. Mainly because if the price goes to 42 and breaks below it, well, that implies that this trend line right there has been broken and then the price has just continued to go down below there, which just from a, from a shorting standpoint, yeah, there would be certainly shorts interested in that level, especially if it continues to break down. But again, it's self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want. If the price you know, can bounce off there and come back up and then get the breakout, you're gonna have people around the world that play patterns, right? I'm a pattern breakout player that could very well be buying that. And when enough people are buying, that can just create you know, momentum in and of itself. So a very interesting pattern here moving into next week, but it's really as straightforward as that for NIO here, just a falling wedge pattern on the 30 minute, and we'll see which way the price ultimately breaks. Next one here, ticker symbol LCLP, down in the world of penny stocks. I think this is now the third video or top 10 in a row I've done on this one, but volume remains very strong. And today, uh, price made a nice recovery. Uh, you know, Thursday got a little shaky, big pull back here, but I mean, it's not like it ever violated any of the moving averages. And now today got a move back to the upside. So really the, the big question mark going into next week is okay, is this trend gonna continue? Does this trend have enough you know, momentum to make another run up towards those previous highs? Which in my mind makes this area of resistance now very interesting moving forward. So you have that area, give or take right around, let's just call it 0.045. And if the price can get up through 0.045, I mean, nothing's guaranteed, but if it's a high volume break of that area, you gotta like the chances that it could potentially get up there to that 0.057 mark, if not even maybe higher than that to give the, the trend the ultimate uh, you know, continuation. So keep an eye on that trend line right there. So again, yes, 0.057 is going to be that overall level of resistance. But before you really put too much focus on that level, price first needs to prove itself by getting above that trend line right there. And then as far as areas of support are concerned, nothing new uh, from the past videos, still all about that 0.025 mark down there. But yeah, that's really the, the main dynamic and main question is, all right, nice 
pullback, or I should say maybe a little bit of a scary pullback, but a nice recovery, not just a question of, all right, can this recovery make another move and get up through that breakout point right there? We'll see what next week has to offer. Next one here, ticker symbol AEHR. Like this setup here quite a bit because, again, it's got just some well-defined areas that make, you know, understand this story pretty straightforward. So the first part is, all right, maybe this is the beginning of the end. Maybe this big pullback here was just kind of the leading indicator that, yeah, party's over. This was only going to be a one-day little thing here, but it's all going to return, you know, return back to where it was. And that's where this 315 mark helps because, you know, if the price does come down there and then eventually breaks down through it. Well, all of a sudden you basically have the price having gone, you know, back to where it was, which as I've said in other uh, stocks, that that's not really a good sign of power, right? When prices all of a sudden go back to where they were. However, as long as the price can stay above this area, which so far so good, there's been a couple instances where the price has gotten around that area. So as long as it stays above that area, well then overall you do from an overarching standpoint, have a set of lows right there. You'd have lows right there. And if you envision those as stair steps, you'd still have stair steps progressing in the upwards direction. So like I said, more of the story there, that $3.15 mark, an important area of support, but definitely the level that I would say no excuses that's got to hold is down there around the $3 mark. Because officially at three, if the price were to drop below there, then yeah, I mean, you were literally right back inside of that range where it just was. On the flip side though, and what's interesting is have a very well-defined kind of consolidation breakout area, which is right there. Basically all afternoon long, price got right up around $3.45 and could never quite push through that area right there. But if the price can, you know, consolidate out a little bit more and get, get the break up through there, that would be a nice initial little breakout point. But the, you know, kind of the golden goose breakout point is, can the price get up to this 375 mark and then give it even a break up through there? And if it can, uh, then, you know, that could very well bring in that many more traders and, you know, can, 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 to continue to use that, you know, terminology, self-fulfilling prophecy, that could bring in a whole lot of people that are just buying because, hey, I like to buy breakouts of highs and that's what we'll be representing there. But you don't want to get too far out of yourself. Let's just first see if the price can go through health consolidation and get the breakout through 345. But overall, nice, well-defined price level. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes on Monday. Next one here, ticker symbol SENS. And good to see that this thing still has the potential to move pretty big, but it's definitely looking shaky right now. There's no doubt about that. To have the price having gone from here all the way up there and now dropped to right there, doesn't mean the chart's destroyed. No, like I said, in my mind, uh, that's a, that's, Maybe a little too dramatic, but the level that I would definitely call the muscled area uh, for same reasoning that I've already used is right down here at 285. As of now, me personally, I would still just consider this a pullback. Now, some people out there may be already using terminology such as, no, this is a reversal. And okay, may maybe so. But in my mind, I think you still got to give the price a chance to you know consolidate out. So if the price does come down here, bounces around and then heads back upwards, well then again, you'd still have a low there. You'd have low there. You got some stair steps going, but you probably know where I'm headed with this. But if the price comes down here and breaks down through it, well, what do you all of a sudden have? Hopefully you're saying, well, Clay, you would have the price having gone right back to where it was. And that would be the epitome of basically a dead cat bounce, meaning the price behaves great and then all of a sudden goes right back to where it was. So again, I'm not saying that that is what's going to happen, but that is why in my mind, 285, very, very important level. If this thing does still have life in it and wants to make another go of it, then that main area of resistance is definitely going to be right up here at $3.50. Fifteen cents, so three fifteen will be that main battleground, and then the next overarching level will be the pink line up there, the two hundred period moving average, right up around the three thirty eight mark. Uh, but you know, one step at a time. Let's just first see if the price can even get above that area. But overall, good to see volume return to this one. Not just like I said, that big question of okay, it was just just a one day uh, you know bounce, and then it's going to go right back to where it was, or is this a leading indicator of more action to come next week? Let's see what happens. Next one here, ticker symbol GXGX. And one of these, um, I think uh, just shell companies or whatever, I know these ones were hot, kind of cooled off. Uh, but And this one was definitely hot early. Big spike right there in volume and price movement. Volume dropped off quite a bit. But with the volume drop off, good to see that the price just didn't completely collapse. It did consolidate out nicely here. So we have ourselves a nice little bullish pattern here head into next week. Uh, the top part of that bullish pattern, you know, main area of resistance would call right up there around $11.50. And then as far as the consolidation areas are concerned, I think in my mind, it makes the most sense to just use the moving averages. I mean, the choice is yours. I can see some people saying, you know, I want to use that pink line there, the 200 period moving average. I can see other people saying, nah, that's a little too uptight. I'd be okay using that purple line, the 50 period moving average. So, I mean, the choice is yours, just, um, or who knows, maybe there's another level that you think makes more sense. But the point here being is well-defined areas. And it's just a question of, all right, this thing can move and it can move very fast. Prove that today. And at least you don't have to know that, you know, you in the the uh, kind of the worry, the doubt of, I don't know, am I chasing? Now, people already chased up there. 
So you don't have to worry about being one of those people that bought up there because the price has pulled back. Now, that, and who knows, maybe, you know, buying around here would still be a bad entry. But the point being is, you know, that nobody could, you know, certainly accuse you of chasing. People would say, okay, yeah, I, I understood. You tried to buy the pullback. You tried to buy the consolidation right there. But the point here being is this one is, you know, demonstrated that it can move big. It's pulled back, but it hasn't crashed, but it's consolidating out nicely on low volume. So if it's at least keeping an eye on in the sense of, all right, well, let's see if it can show some signs of life. Uh, but of course, you know, if, if, if it just continues to drift downwards, well, then there's not going to really be any sort of trade on it. But like I said, the, the interesting dynamic is, and I don't know if I've ever even heard of this one, but kind of came out of nowhere. And now it's just a question of, okay, is this going to be a multi-day runner? And this is just a little consolidation or was it just kind of almost like a one day little pump and dump? We'll see what happens. Next one here, ticker symbol SGOC. And I was really torn. Do I want to follow this one? It, it seems like it's kind of a clown. What do I mean by that? Well, basically the past couple of days have been nice moves up and then, hey, just kidding, down it goes. And then you look at that day, big spike up. Oh, just kidding, down it goes. Then you look at this morning, gap up. Oh, just kidding, down it goes. But what I suppose is kind of suckering me in and putting it on the watch list is, okay, yeah, it did it, but I mean, good, strong afternoon. The price has started to creep back upwards. Now, is this going to continue? That all remains to be seen. Uh, could this be another, hey, just kidding, and the price goes back down there? Yeah, it absolutely could. I mean, this thing's developing kind of the track record of doing that, but that also, I mean, there's no guarantee, so that doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to roll back over. Uh, but the point here being is there, there's definitely a, a well-established area, at least in my opinion now, that kind of just illustrates this, and that's the tread line right here. And with that late day bounce, you can see that the price is basically sitting right below the tread line, which is pretty accurate. I mean, you use that area and that area, and it's done a good job of forecasting that and that right there. And again, you look right there, and the price is literally sitting at that area. So you know that there's going to be a bunch of people, and rightfully so, wondering, all right, can the price get the breakout? Can the price get the break through that tread line? And if it can, uh, then you know, going back to that self-fulfilling prophecy uh, kind of idea, that could certainly create something like that. But again, I would also be very, very careful uh, and you know, maybe reduce position size uh, because y you just never know. This thing likes to play games all of a sudden. I mean, all these spikes acting like it wants to be strong. Just kidding. Acting like it wants to be strong. Just kidding. Acting, you get the idea. Just kidding. So what I would hate is for this to break out, act like it wants to be strong, and then just completely roll back over. So like I said, I'm not saying to avoid it because to be fair, maybe this all of a sudden comes into play which is what makes this interesting is this one has shown it can move and it can move very fast. So maybe it does break that tread line and his, you know, this sort of history is about to repeat itself. So that's why risk management matters, but you just, you know, need to keep in the back of your mind that this thing has kind of entered in that phase of liking to act like it wants to be strong and then not do it. Uh, but anyways, like I said, very interesting setup, especially with the late day bounce. So we'll see if the price can get the breakout of that tread line. If it does, who knows, maybe there'll be some fireworks. So that wraps up uh, the top 10 here. And again, I want to personally invite you to this live class. So if you if you liked what you heard, if you're, you can, okay, yeah, I, I can see the value. I can see how these technical charts could be used as a tool to make good, solid decisions. You know, not guaranteed decisions, but certainly much better than just throwing a dart or randomly guessing. So if you want to learn more, you know, about the tool, the philosophy behind them, how they can and should be used, how they should not be used. Uh, you know, and, you know, mainly how they are a tool that can be used to build consistency as a trader. Then that class, again, is Thursday on July 22nd, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So that's always the key, Eastern time. Uh, but I'd love to talk charge with you. And uh, so, if, like I said, if, if you think there'd be any value at all, um, and I can say you, you will get value out of it, assuming you enjoyed what you just heard in this video, then definitely get signed up. And then as far as the top 10 video is concerned, if you enjoy these videos, if you like this format and want me to keep making these videos, then please do two things to com communicate that to me. Hit the like button, leave a simple comment. It could be a smiley face emoji, but those two things communicate to me that you enjoy these videos and that they're worth my time doing them. As long as I know that I'm not wasting my time putting these videos together, then I have no problem doing them at all. But you know, I just wanna be good with time management and I wanna know that people are enjoying. So if you are enjoying, hit the like button, leave a simple comment. And then again, like I said, if you're interested in learning more about charts, how to use them as a tool to build consistency, then go get signed up for the class and hopefully everybody enjoys their weekend.